Well, Black Beauty finally arrived, the MK3. Ordered it back on October the 26th, 2017, and it arrived January the 29th, 2018, so a little over three months. Got it in the kit form and got it in the black form. Uh, took about five and a half hours to put the kit together, maybe six. I did take a break in there. Um, didn't do any test prints, got right onto a project that I've been working on, which is all these parts for a new robot project. It's going to be a servo controlled robot based off the uh, the movie Zothra. There's a robot in there and I kind of wanted to do something with that kind of look. And everything went pretty good. I only had a couple of well, started with one minor problem on this one. There's a little warping on this lip, a little lift, where it didn't stick to the PEI sheet, and that's nothing new. I've been using PEI for a few years, so I know that it can, it has its good parts and it has its bad parts. But uh, last night I had my biggest problem. I'm trying to print the body now, which starts off kind of looking like a big bowl, and I got 15 hours into it before the machine failed altogether. And there was a pre-fill. Let's see if we can get some light shining through here. See if you can see this crack better. There you go. See that? That must have been maybe 9 or 10 hours into the print. This would have been about 15 hours. Um, it just uh, apparently kept printing but not extruding all the way around and then fixed itself because I wasn't there. I was asleep. It was the middle of the night. This is a part that I have test printed successfully on my Anycubic i3 so I know that the STL file is fine and the Anycubic I use Cura so it's sliced differently and here I'm using all the latest downloads from Persa and so I'm not really sure what happened there. I guess you know, way back when I ordered this machine, it was in the hopes that it would have all the things that they were showing at the trade shows. You know, the nicer build sheet rather than the, than the clear, because I think the, the rough textured one things will stick to better. Didn't get that. And then I thought they were uh, saying that the optical sensor wasn't just a filament sensor, it was also going to detect actual motion of the filament. And I was hoping for that because filament jams are a very real thing. And I believe that that line right there represents an actual filament jam. And at some point the uh, dual extruder or drive thing they got in there and now was able to break whatever jam was on there, a reel of filament loose, and started printing again. If it had been a hot end jam, it wouldn't have cleared itself. But um, that's the other thing. You know, It comes with this roll of uh, silver PLA and it looks like, wow, I'm going to get a whole kilogram. Well, no. the uh, inside of the roll is right there and they only load it to right here so you get about a finger's worth of plastic so it's kind of a fox or fake roll of PLA and I was hoping to be able to print one robot project on it and I think if that hadn't failed I probably would have made it I don't think there would be enough filament left on there for a second attempt but I'll use up what's on there then I guess I'll have to go to something else but since I hadn't planned on painting this project in the end I guess these parts will either not be used or they'll be for one that I give to a friend and paint. I was hoping to be able to just go with the silver PLA all the way. So, what do I think about the machine? Well, it is a lot quieter than the MK2 was. I'm very happy with that. Um, like I say, I'm disappointed in not getting the build sheet that was advertised. I'm disappointed that the optical sensor doesn't actually detect movement. It'll only detect well, and as most of you know that follow all the different YouTubes, it doesn't even work with some filaments. So, they'd have been a lot better off just putting a mechanical switch in there. That would last so much longer than an optical, which is now just an optical switch. Because anyone who's ever owned a computer that has a mouse or a trackball, you know, you get to buy a new mouse or trackball every six months to one year to two years, depending how often you use your computer. Because uh, LEDs do degrade with time their light output. And so... This thing isn't going to last all that long if you're using it. I'd have it turned off. Um, I should probably turn it on because I know that film is going to run out. I'll turn that on when I'm done filming this so that when it runs out of film I can have a chance to uh, load new in. 
So anyway, I'm very happy with how quiet the machine is. The printing accuracy is every bit as good as the MK2. The, the kit put together, no problems really. I mean, there's, there's errors in the book, but because I had three months from when I ordered it to when it came, I watched every single YouTube online on guys building theirs. So I was pretty much already in tune with what was needed to be done and you know what errors and things were in the books and the manual so it was an easy build it was a fun build uh, the machine worked great it um, in the pre-test mode it did fail to raise its z-axis up all the way to where they click so that first attempt at uh, doing the auto cal fell but that's not a big deal i've heard of that happening i just told it to do it again and it did and it went all the way up and clicked and came down and everything was happy and uh, my very first print I uh, believe it was one of these feet I think I started at the bottom and went way up this is the one that has a, a switch connection in the back and everything looked good in fact these parts are even printed with no support whatsoever everything is a bridge and an overhang and it worked really well I was really surprised there was even a part here let me see if I can find it here it's these hip covers I meant to, uh, when I sliced this, to turn on the supports for all this inside stuff that can't be seen. So I didn't, I didn't want supports to make it pretty on the inside. I just wanted to make sure it could print because how could it bridge across something that has an opening in the middle? It has to come out and all of a sudden the filament stops in midair. Well, I don't know how it did it because that was my screw up in the slicer. It didn't turn that on. It, it printed it. And yeah, sure, it looks a little bugger buoy on the inside. But I don't really care what it looks like on the inside. This is a cosmetic part, and the outside looks great. So I was really amazed at its bridging abilities there. I I had one little warping issue here on this part, which is, uh, you know, PEI is not, the smooth PEI is not the best solution. Scuffing it up with sandpaper definitely helps. The uh, build plate on the anti-cubic i3 Mega that is just incredible. I wish that was available on a flex plate and maybe it will be now that uh, Purse has gone to this uh, flex plate system which basically is a system that I had put on my machines over two and a half years ago starting with my uh, Flash Forge Dreamers I built that in myself and it worked great and, and I'm just so glad that they finally went to it here because it's so much easier to remove the parts click them off and you're not ever screwing with your bed or anything but now I wish rather than the smooth coating or even their powder coating that they're hoping to maybe figure out one of these days, they would go with whatever coatings on that i3 Mega that, uh, that build stuff they have on the glass. If they could put that textured on there, and it might just be, let's walk in the other room. It might just be it's, that it's PEI also, but it's maybe silk screened on or something in a textured mode. But this ultra base finish, nothing nothing works as well as that stuff granted if it cools down because of a power failure the part is going to come off but that's true with PEI also but as far as giving me non-warping and coming off easy parts that that's just the greatest right there I may have to figure out a way to put the glass plate on here I guess but anyway overhaul very happy good build quiet um, the linear bearings in the bed moving back and forth as you just heard right there are as noisy as ever um, basically depending on the part you're doing like you do a part like one of these big flat ones where there's going to be a lot of travel time back and forth it does sound like there's some old man outside with a hand saw in his hand going rang, 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 rang. but uh, <laughs> that's not all the time that's only on certain parts and it could be that if we packed those bearings like on the anti-cubic, they pack all theirs with a clear silicone grease, so they're, they're actually very quiet. You never hear the bed move on that machine. It might be worth pulling the rods on this and just packing the bearings in there with a, a really thick, clear silicone grease and see if that doesn't get rid of that last little bit of noise. Because if you can get rid of that bed noise, you have got yourself one quiet machine stock. The uh, dual blowing part cooling fan is much better then the original one of my biggest complaints with the MK2 was always the part cooling fan and I had even tried designing one where it would blow the air from two sides and I put that up on Thingiverse and it was only marginally successful I just wasn't getting enough air movement there 
and there's just really no other place to put the fan in this design. It's either going to hit the sides or it's in, you got cables coming out the back. So, I mean, what are you going to do? But with this one, I've noticed that uh, this is the, the front of the fan side of the body. You can see it looks great. It overhangs everything all the way up. But clear down here on the bottom, I think it shows up. See how it looks different? That would be the back side away from the fans. It got the least amount of air during one of the steepest parts of the uh, print. Still looks a little buggered up, which is a shame. If we could, uh, if we could get a really good airflow from both sides, front and rear, or side and side, um, much like an Ultimaker does and a, a few other printers, the parts would really come out looking a lot better when you're talking about details on the back side of where the part cooling fan is. But you can always find things to nitpick about, can't you? I mean, this, this is still a great machine. It's still a great price. As you can see by all of these highly detailed parts, it's still doing a, a really fantastic job. Most of these parts I could print as one piece, except this is part of a shoulder part here. There's going to be a magnet that will go in that hole, and then the arm continues down, hooks to the servo. It's designed as one piece, but because I don't like uh, having to use supports and then cleaning off supports and having that mar the surface, plus all the wasted time on supports and the wasted plastic, I find it easier just to cut a lot of the uh, parts that I design in half and lay them flat on the bed. Gluing something together with uh, speed set and your your CA glues these days takes, what, two, three seconds? Adding all that support time not only wastes plastic, it can add hours to the print time. So a lot of things will split. Split the arms, they could be one piece again. Split the shoulders. Uh, the lower body, that needs to be split because i got to get servos and wires inside. It's fairly complex parts. So overall, very happy. So glad Black Beauty finally made it. And I think, unlike other people who are printing different fan shrouds just to cover up the uh, horrible cream and brown, I think I'm going to go for an easier solution. I'm just going to get out some paint. I'm just going to paint the fan black. Seems like the easiest way to go to me. Happy printing.